Welcome to the ADF Insider Essential Series, which demonstrates essential skills, tips and techniques that you will require for building an ADF application. In this demonstration, you're going to see how you can store different values to those that you display when using a select one radio UI component. So what's the problem we're trying to solve here? Well, quite a common case is that your database has underlying data, such as an order status might be a numeric value, or you might have an order filled being a data value, which is Y or N, but you would actually like to display something a little bit more readable to your end users, for example, yes or no, or the order status might be a, a string that's readable, such as not fully entered or cancelled bad credit. So how do you go around creating a data model and a UI where you can display a specific value but store something slightly different? And with ADF we can actually do this pretty easily. The way that we do this is we create a read-only view object and this read-only view object holds the data value and the display value that we want to map it to. So for example, and here we can see in the screenshot, we might have a data value of Y or N, but we define a display value which is yes and no. We can as then assign this view object to be a model-driven list of values on the appropriate attribute. We can then set the type of model-driven list of values, for example, a radio checkbox or drop-down list, and ADF does the rest for us. So let's see this in a demonstration. Okay, so let's look at our orders data first of all. And there you can see the underlying values Y and N in the database. And that's the attribute that we're going to be assigning this checkbox to. So first of all, let's create a read-only view object and we'll call this yes, no, VO. And this is a read-only view object based on a static list of data and we're going to create the attributes. So first of all, I'm creating an attribute data value, which will hold the actual value we want in the database and display value, which maps the string we want to use to display to the user. I'm now going to assign the values, so we want a data value of Y to be displayed as yes, and a data value of N to be displayed as no. So let's finish. And the next step is to assign that list of values, or that view object, as a list of values to the order filled attribute. So they were selecting our list of our view object we've just created and we're going to assign that data value is the value that's being returned into the order filled attribute. And we want this list of values displayed as a radio group and the value we want displayed as displayed value. That's the attribute. Okay, let's save that and go to our page. And now we can just drag and drop this view object, this data collection onto the page as a form and there you can see the order fields is already picked up to be a, a radio one. So let's OK that. And I'm just going to add in a commit operation onto the submit button so that you can see the data that's actually committed back. And let's run and test that. So there you can see we cycle through, we've got order filled yes, here's one that's no, another one that's yes, another one that's no, and let's go on ID number 103 and change it to order filled yes. And if we go back and look at our database, you'll see that that attribute, that value has now been changed to order filled Y. So to summarize, we used a read-only view object which mapped the data values that we wanted to have in our database to values that we want to display in the UI. 
We assigned that view object as a model driven list of values to the appropriate attribute and we defined which UI components we wanted to display that model driven list of values. For more information you can go to OTN. Thank you very much for listening.